Hi, this is Jonathan Harris, Lead Application Engineer at Entopology, and today I am going to show you how to add fillets to any lattice. Now, why would you want to add fillets? Well, first, what are fillets? So take a look at this picture. Look at this lattice, nice cylindrical beams, not so nice sharp edges. If you've printed lattices before and you expect to get stretch dominated octet lattice performance, but then it cracks at the nodes, fillets might be your reason why, because these are great at introducing stress concentrations, which we do not want in a structural component. So what's a fillet? A fillet is just smoothening out those edges, and doing that in NTOP is surprisingly easy. Now how big of a deal are these stress concentrations? There's some good research out there this paper in particular, which we'll link to, um, which shows the effects of nodal fillets on various lattices. And they applied some fillets to this, and if we skip to the spoilers here, found a 20% boost in an octet lattice um, for buckling stress. That is pretty good, especially if you can do it in just a few clicks. So today, we're going to learn how to do that. Okay, let's start. So if you've used NTOP before, you've probably found it's pretty easy to fill parts with lattices, especially these foam-like structures. But one thing I want to point out is that uh, the resolution setting can sometimes mislead you into thinking that you already have fillets. So this is important for both existing NTOP users and people trying to trying to think if they can get any value of using NTOP. So if you press Control H, you will get a high res exact view of your geometry. If you're just zooming around like this, we do an approximation which lets me render a huge lattice at 60 frames per second. That's why it looks a little smooth. Um, pause, zoom in, Control H, you see the exact view. With filleting, and this is only one block, look at this, all I did was smoothen body. I can switch to that view, high res, boom, fillets. It's, it's actually that, that easy to do that. And I would encourage people to use this approach on most of their lattices. Um, I'm struggling to think of a reason why you, you wouldn't want them. Uh, not only do they make them the lattices more mechanically robust, but it also improves meshing because you don't have sharp intersections where triangles can sometimes get hung up on. Um, so if you're using NTOP already, definitely take a look at this technique. Uh, this will work on just about any existing lattice in one block. Um, but I also want to show you a more detailed view of how to do this uh, starting from a new lattice. So in NTOP, you can actually make your own custom unit cells. And I'm going to just skip ahead to this file, which we will attach. Um, but I'll also show you in just a moment how to make it. Is we've got a standard octet unit cell. And it's cropped slightly offset, so that's why it looks a little bit different. Um, when you're designing with lattices, you should always be looking at the relative density. That is more important, or let's say more indicative, um, a, better, a better design variable than going with strut diameter. Um, why is that the case? Because it lets you very easily compare different cellular materials. So if I switch this lattice to a body-centered cubic, and we can do that in here, the relative density is going to tell me how much of this unit cell is solid and how much is empty. So this is 17.8 and a bit percent. Um, so whatever material I make this out of, let's say steel, just for example, I would take my 8,000 uh, kilograms per meter cubed and multiply by this fraction. And that would give me the mass of my lattice. Rather than having to do things with strut diameters and cylinder volume equations, which you can never, <laughs> never capture these nodes with. Um, okay, so what is, 
how do we fillet this? So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to assume that you can already make a lattice unit cell. If not, uh, don't worry, we're going to make a whole lattice 101 video pretty soon. But the idea here is that um, you start with the unit cell and you can crop it into a bounding box. And that bounding box just tells it anything in here I'm going to tessellate. If you want to design your unit cell in CAD, just fit it within a box and you can use this process. All right. So as we were talking, I realized I had a whole simulation running. Um, so let's just undo that and pause that. We'll get there. Um, all right. So to add fillets, okay. To add fillets. So we've got this lattice, um, this lattice unit cell here. And the important step here is that if we're going to smoothen this, we need to extend it just a little bit so that we don't do what is, I'll just show you what, what happens when you do it wrong. So when you do it wrong, and we, we have to make our grid size roughly on the order of, um, let's say around a quarter or less of our strut diameter. This will take some fiddling though. When you, so look at this, this is no good. So cubic smoothening, we get a nicer response. A nicer appearance but we still probably ought to do another smooth and iteration but you're looking at these exterior beams and thinking where's my lattice going uh, good question and that's what we're going to solve with this little trick so to do it right you have to extend the tessellation to be one unit cell extra in each direction so I've got this lattice now and you can just about see this cube in the middle. That's our unit cell boundary. We've extended the lattice a little bit. So now if I smoothen that and crop it, i.e. intersect, to this little bounding box, we will get a nice smoothened unit cell. Ooh, yeah, look at that. All right. That looks pretty good. So let's make this a variable lattice with fillets. And we're going to make sure that it is sharply cut inside that little boundary. All right. And I've realized I've taken my lattice away. So I'm going to put it back with control drag. That will ensure that we don't lose it. And some block that I made just to help us with this is this relative density block. Again, on top you can make custom blocks. All I did here was, um, this is actually identical to the weight savings block that we already have. I just changed the name uh, to make it more lattice friendly. So what this is doing is it's calculating the volume of the lattice, the volume of the solid region that it fills, and it gives you that fraction, relative density. When we smoothen a lattice, and I've, <laughs> I've named two things the exact same, so don't, don't learn from that. When I smoothen a lattice, I remove material. And here you can see, by doing this process, we have actually taken off about one and a half uh, percent relative density. Whether you can print that accurately, I'll assume that you can just for for um, learning sake here. When you smoothen a part, you erase material regardless of the features. That is why we can smoothen a, a lattice with a million nodes uh, because we don't we don't calculate it on each surface intersection. The catch is that we remove material elsewhere too. So if we turn on the other view, let's make our let's make our new and improved lattice a nice shade of blue. You can see that we will take material from this central uh, central bit of the beam 
and relocate it to the nodes. Um, there's a slight loss of volume though, so if you want to make it exactly the same, you can inject this offset block into the process and just give it a very small touch of offset. And this will be unit cell dependent. It will also be uh, relative density dependent. And it might be on you to try a few different parameters and maybe build a little lookup table uh, to get it just right for your custom unit cell. What I'm doing, oops, wrong number. What I'm doing here is tweaking that offset until I see these two numbers matching or getting close enough, let's say. All right. Okay, I just need a tiny bit more offset. We'll go for perfection. Here we go. Oh, what have I done now? <laughs> okay, here we go. Two, two, four. All right, maybe I won't go for perfection. Two, two, three. Good enough. We're point. What are we? Point zero one percent off. So good enough. The reason for doing that is because I want to show you a stress simulation of how this changes the lattice performance. So, like any good cooking show, I have this. Oh, I don't actually have it done already. Let me let me simulate that. So this is going to simulate. This workflow will be attached uh, to our video, so you can check it out. What it's doing now is constructing a mesh for this unit cell. And I made it do a pretty high resolution mesh so that we can actually capture the stresses. Uh, just to see how long that took. Okay, so 220 seconds, not bad. Back on track, back on topic, we've got this unit cell, just to tie things up, we've got this unit cell with no fillets. Let me show you the stresses and let's pick a number which shows. So, you, okay, so you can see the stress concentrations here. Um, this cell, I just loaded it in compression, just simple. But you can see these stress concentrations. We're not taking advantage of all that material in the beams. When we apply the fillets, and I won't make you sit through this simulation this time, when we apply the fillets with the exact same relative density, our static analysis, when we change this stress to be the same, look at that. They're gone. The stress concentrations are gone. Um, pulling up side by side. Okay, maybe... Not quite, side by side. Let's get this lined up. So these are the same scale bars. I'm missing my desktop screen right now. Um, same scale bars, but you can see just a massive reduction in stresses. Uh, so all of that done with two blocks. One block if you want just the smoothening a second block if you want to preserve the relative density. And yeah, so that, that's a lot easier than clicking, <laughs> clicking a bunch of edges. Um, so to summarize, we've added fillets to this lattice. It's greatly reduced stress concentrations. Some other research has shown that this can increase the overall performance by pretty big numbers in that one paper, 20%. Um, it would be great to hear from you, if you use this technique, how much it improves your designs as well. Um, and lastly, just to emphasize, this can be done with custom unit cells, as I've shown here, which can then create a lattice, but it can also be done, as we showed in the first file, on a pre-existing lattice. So this is really quite a, a usable technique, scalable technique, and uh, looking forward to hearing from you all how it helps your lattices. So thank you very much.